special reason I wanted to hear that this year. Sister Sister Elms related to you about the passing of Brother Elms. Yeah. And of course, a couple of years ago, Brother Elms was here with us. Right. And uh, he and Bishop Johnson had a very interesting talk. Right. About uh, they had the same spiritual grandfather. That's correct. And uh, so that network of people who knew each other in the past brought others together at a later date where they could meet in this world. That's an amazing thing that God arranges. But on that day when we went back and we saw him laying there at the bottom of the door in the driveway, something absolutely incredible happened. Yes, brothers. We, we rushed back there and I began to do chest compressions. Yes. A few seconds later, the first volunteer medic pulled up and put a small oxygen mask. And of course, we didn't know it at the time, but Brother Elms was long gone, even though it had just been a few moments. And I was feverishly working, trying to press his chest to somehow bring a response from the heart and the lungs. And, sure. And uh, being so focused on that, I, I didn't notice something. And uh, as the other people came in, it was like half the county, all the EMTs and sheriff's deputies, they came rushing in and I yes. backed away as they came in with their equipment. And uh, something frightened me. And I didn't know what, why I was frightened. And as she said, the deputies were kind of wandering around looking around. Yes. We didn't know what they were looking at. And we found out later, one of the deputies who did not go to church and is not religious, told the other men in the de sheriff's department, they said, there was something horrifyingly fearful around that man. And said, we were scared, we were very frightened to approach him. Yes. And so after we left, I realized there was something very, very supernatural there. Yes. Yes. And as I, we went to the hospital later on, I developed a fear about going back to that place. In fact, for several days, I couldn't go back. And it wasn't until we had a large company of people that I felt courage enough to go back. And I'm not afraid of hardly anything. And it dawned on me yes. that there were celestial beings standing around him. Yes. And, and I realized, I never understood, Bishop, what Jacob meant. Yes. When he saw the vision of the ladder. And he yes. said, how dreadful is this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Right. You know, there are supernatural happenings that take place at times of like that we don't understand. And sometimes we're so insensitive we don't even realize what's happening. Yes. But friend, when men of faith fall like that, the very blessed angels of God come and escort them into his yeah. presence. Yeah. That's what we were feeling. Hallelujah. But then I come back into the sanctuary of God. I come back with them that rejoice. I come back with them that praise the name of the living God. And the presence of the Lord is here in a saving way. And in a joyful expression. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man. We're in the presence. We're in the presence of the Most High God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Down from his glory. Ever living story. Ever living story. Our Lord and Savior. King. My God and Savior came. And Jesus was his name. He was born in a manger to his own 
a stranger a man of sorrows tears and agony from my heart I sing oh how I love him how I adore him my breath my sunshine my all in all oh the great creator became my savior and all God's fullness dwelleth in Him. And oh, how I love Him. How I, how I adore Him. You see, sunshine my all my all my all in all the great the great creator he came my savior What kind dissension? I want you to think about this. Bringing us our redemption. Oh, and some of us have been there and done that. That in the dead of night, not one, not one, there was not one faint hope inside oh but god gray just tender laid aside his splendor ah that's when he when he started stooping to woo to win and to save my soul Oh, we stood up and sang, oh, how I love him, how I adore him, my breath, my sunshine, my Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Would you stand for the reading of the great word of God this afternoon? Oh, my word, it's good to be in Bethesda Temple once again. It's good to be in the household of faith. As you're here. It's great to be among the general assembly of the firstborn. Right, 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 right. The people of the name, the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hey, Hallelujah. 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 Woo. My Lord, have mercy. Lord, I thank God you. is great and greatly to be praised. Really praise, brother. Praise God. Lord, thank you. I want to bring a very special message to this church that loves Bible preaching and Bible yes. study and yes. preach it, the analysis of the truth of God. Yes. I want to preach an unusual message today. I, yes. I so love the, the great, the great reverence and desire that Bishop Johnson has for the truth of God. He, yes. he ins has inspired so many of us over the years. Yes. And uh, he is certainly someone I highly esteem and is a role model to me. And uh, I, I can't say enough about how I love Bishop Johnson. Love you too, man. And his great stand for truth. And uh, this message is in honor of that great truth that we love and hold great dear. Great truth. And uh, I'm, the, the, the scripture passage we're going to take this morning is very familiar to you but the angle that we emerge with it from is very different yes and it will ring with the truth of the word of god and god's revelation to us you know god will reveal things to us every day if we'll dig below the surface and seek for the treasures that are therein amen and uh lord, reading Jesus. from uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, in the 10th chapter, verse 25. It's so enjoyable to preach to a, a, a church that loves Bible preaching. There's a lot of cliches and little anecdotes and little jokes and stories that are being masqueraded as preaching. Preaching is taking the word and rightly dividing it. That's preaching. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Well, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do and thou shalt live. Yes. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, yes. fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, but when he saw him, pass by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and also passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, sent him on his own beast, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said, Take care of him. Whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus, Go and do thou likewise. If you will notice in that amazing story, which has touched all of us deeply, in that story... The people that should have stopped yes. did not stop. They did not stop. And the one that did stop 
was a total stranger. Yes. Total stranger. Yes. And I want to take this passage of scripture today and preach a message I hope will change you forever. I want to preach on the subject familiar spirits. Yes. Familiar, familiar spirits. spirits. Hallelujah. Let's just thank the Lord for his great word thank you, Lord, today. For your, Lord, you your great word, love you Lord. for your word. You for your and we love you because of the integrity of your word and the truth of your word. We thank you for these people that love it, God. And we have come together in a convening of believers in faith. And we want to see you outpour your spirit, Lord, upon many here today and change lives for your glory, God. Give hope to the hopeless and meaning to them that have no direction. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. One of the very profound things about people that come up to the arena of Pentecost, the place where the Pentecostal message and experience is displayed, is the fact that those of us that do not have a biblical or a background in religion or in the things of God are kind of startled by what we see and what we hear. It's different. Especially if we are oriented to the religions of society and the mainstream religions. It, to come into a place where there is such a total difference and a, and a powerful expression of worship and such an emphatic preaching of the Word of God in the way that it is done, we, we are just kind of sometimes unnerved and, and people will say, well, I've never, you know, I've never, I've never been anywhere like that. I've never experienced anything like that. And, uh, and, and yet something draws you back again and you come back. Uh, and that's because God as he is, is someone that is not really known to us. Because a lot of what we do is according to our own self-willed ways. Uh, the carnal man and woman will not, will not worship God in the beginning in their carnality the way God wants them to worship Him. They will worship Him the way they want to worship Him. And, and therefore, that's why there are many branches of Christianity. That's why. Because the human self-will devises its own way and path. And uh, it is the path that is according to the flesh. And so, and so God does not really enter into that, and, and we don't really know who God is. And, of course, in this story, uh, the, the people that should have stopped and helped him, the people that were, according to their own profession, were people who, by design, were supposed to help people, passed by on the other side. They did not want to get involved and they didn't want to get their hands dirty. This was a man that was going to die if he did not receive medical help and they just didn't want to get involved. You know, some people are so caught up in their religion that they have forgotten the reason that they were sent into the world to, in the first place and that is to help and to reach out and to minister to those that are in need. That's what we are here for. And apparently these men fell into the same category. And so a stranger comes by. And, and the reason that Jesus gave this parable to these people was because the stranger was typical of the way God looks at people. He comes to help us when we don't even know him. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. He, he was a stranger. In fact, many of us in our past life of sin in a Gentile, heathen, un disconnected 
kind of living. We were people that cursed in the name of God. We ridicule people that went to church. How many remember using the kind of language that they shouldn't use and, and knowing that that wasn't right, but that was a part of your nature of sin? You just do that. And much of it involved a, a very abusive uh, uh, actually direction towards God. And, and the language was not right. The thinking wasn't right. We did not go to church. We did not go to worship God. God was somebody that wasn't even a part of our life. And if even if somebody said, do you believe in God? And you said, well, yes, I do. It still wasn't a part of your life. He did not live in you and among you and did not walk with you and become a vital part of your life. So that God was a stranger to you. And uh, he uh, was someone you didn't really understand. Now, um, the reason I am preaching this today is because uh, the devil has figured something out uh, about us people. And that is what I just referred to earlier. And that is that we are people who like to be a part of something that we are familiar with. Uh, many of us in these holidays that will be coming up between now and the end of the year will be gathering together with family and friends and people that we are familiar with. That's just human nature. Uh, you, you know, you just do that. And, uh, and so uh, we feel comfortable in that respect. We like to be with those that we love and that we know. Well, the devil is a keen, sharp-eyed observer of those things that we do and he knows that there uh, are things that we like and things that we're comfortable with and so he sometimes comes in and behind the people that we're familiar with to reach us uh, I'm, I'm uh, reminded of the the fantastic passage of scripture in the gospel of Matthew when Jesus was with the disciples one day and he looked at them and he asked them the question, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, well, some, some say that, you know, that thou art Jeremiah or Elias or that one of the prophets and, and, and they had other uh, answers for what people thought. And he said, but whom say ye that I am? And it seemed like instantly in that scripture, Peter jumped up and he said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. And it was such a powerful statement and an emphasis of his divine identity that the Lord immediately said, yes, sir, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, sir. But my Father which is in heaven hath revealed this unto you. This is a divine revelation and you exactly identified who I am with precision. And upon that realization, upon the revelation of my name, upon the revelation of who I am, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I believe right then that the disciples raised their hands and began to worship the Lord just like we worship the Lord when we hear it repeated today. But in a few moments, something unthinkable happens. Something bizarre happens. In fact, it's, it's one of the strangest passages in the New Testament. Something happens. And, and the Lord begins to describe how that as a, as a called vessel and as the manifestation of God, he has to give himself over to those, his tormentors, and yield himself to the will of God. And the same man that cried out, Thou art the Christ, approaches him and says, not so, Lord. We will not allow this to happen. And he stepped in in an attempt to defend him. And when he did, the Lord whirled around and said, get thee behind me, Satan. Yes, yes, yes. How can the man that was given the keys to the kingdom of God, how can the man who was actually spoken to by the Lord to say that, that what you loose and bind on earth shall be loose and bound in heaven. How can the same man be referred to as Satan? And yet that's exactly what we read there. And what it amounts to is that if you will notice throughout the Bible there is the phrase familiar spirits. 
that are referred to. There are familiar spirits referred to in the Old Testament. There were people in the New Testament that were of a spirit of divination. They had familiar spirits. And what it amounts to is that the devil takes on a disguise that is so clever and so very, very hidden and camouflaged that we don't see it because it is in the form of someone we love or someone we, we respect. This is why many churches today are preached to by pastors and men that don't preach truth but they are beloved by the people in a human way they have the respect of people in a human way but what they preach is not biblically founded and not biblical in its context hallelujah and the devil has figured out that we are suckers for kindness and friendship Now, I'm telling you, I, I, we all love one another here today, and, and, and every time I come here, there are the most wonderful handshakes, back pats, embraces. I love these brethren. I love these sisters. I love these people that lift up the name of the Lord, that do service for God in Bethesda. And, and when people come up and say, you know, you are such a dignified, nice-looking, articulate man, and I have always thought so highly of you, there can't help but be a smile start breaking across this nice man's face. And it, and it, and it, and it travels all the way down the created line of creatures because when you do that to your puppy, the puppy will nuzzle up to you and, and, and kind of push his ear up so you can scratch and, and, and itch his ear and do the same thing. In fact, you can even use a loving, warm t tone of voice to your puppy and say, you're so stupid, you're so ignorant, and you don't even know what's going on. And the puppy will still just come up and... and See, it's, it's, it's all up and down the line of creation. We, we just yield to that kindness and friendship. And the, the devil is fully aware of that fact. Yeah. Yeah. A few years ago, I received a call from out of state. And a lady called me and uh, asked me if I would baptize her uh, later on that day that she was in town. And... Uh, uh, she said that uh, her relative would be contacting me, and the relative did, and, and they were going to come be baptized. And I said, well, this is wonderful. And the, the, the relative called me and said, we had a Bible study, and she saw the necessity of baptism in Jesus' name. And I thank you so much for baptizing her this afternoon. So we got to the church, and as we got to the church, the phone rang again, and the uh, voice on the other uh, end of the phone was the relative, and she said, you know, uh, my, uh, my cousin has backed out. And I said, well, why? why, why? She, she saw the need for baptism in the name of the Lord for the remission of her sins. She said, her mother got a hold of her. And her mother said, uh, it's not necessary for you to be baptized at all, much less in a certain way. And, of course, when something like that happens, that, that is a contradiction to the entire scope of the Word of God. The high priest could not go into the Holy of Holies until there was a stop at the brazen labor of water. And, and the kingdom of God could not be entered into unless you're born of the water and born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You're going to meet the water. You're going to go into the water in the name of the Lord for the remission of your sins if you are going to be in the kingdom of God. And, and, and she stopped that tremendous process of salvation because the familiar spirit spoke through the mother. That was not the mother being the inspiration for that statement. That was the demons of hell trying to dislodge someone from their salvation that God had mercifully given to them. Hallelujah. Now, if you will notice, uh, the, the Bible gives us some amazing uh, descriptions of, 
of the devil in his early days. And in fact, it, it's very uh, uh, amazing. In, in the 28th chapter of Ezekiel, and I want you to listen to this because this is, this is the word of God as clear and sharp as it can be. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created until iniquity was found in thee. And because thine heart was lifted up and because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by re reason of thy brightness. I'm telling you, that angel that was in heaven known as Lucifer was a beautiful creature. He was magnificent. He had glittering, shining stones throughout his created being. The, according to this, when he walked, music came out of him. His mo movement caused music. There was something melodic about his very presence. There was something inspiring about his very being. There were no angels like him. He moved and breathed and lived in a sphere and an awe of majesty and beauty like no other angel and the angels were in awe of him until iniquity was found in him until iniquity was found in him and what what we discover there is that when Lucifer was cast out of the heavens, came down to the earth, and Adam and Eve ran into him in the garden, he was still an attractive creature. That's why they were drawn to him. That's why they entered into conversation with him. And by the time that whole scene was over with and the Lord cursed him, he was down on the ground as the slithering reptile that we jump back from today. The curse and the judgment of God brought him to the other end of the spectrum to the, from the most magnificent creature of the creation to one of the most reviled and lowly creatures that every one of us jump back from. Now I'm telling you, if you go out into your garden shed, if you go out into your garden shed and get to poking around somewhere back there where you hadn't been in a while and all of a sudden something slithers out and comes out beside your little hole and your little rake, you're not going to just kind of calmly look down and say, well, hello there, Mr. Snake. You're going to jump back and do a little sh Holy Ghost shuffle right there in the shed. You know, you're, not, you're not wanting to be in the company of that thing. And that's why the curse and the judgment of God was a, was a revulsion to the rest of the creation. Horses jump up and rear up when they see a snake on the ground. And ladies just go into total hysterics when they see a snake. Can the ladies say amen? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is that, that kind of a revulsion, but it, it took from the heavenly beauty of that creature. Uh, listen to me. When this creature moved in heaven, the, the, the tabrets and the pipes were in him. There was a sound that emitted a melody, a harmony that was perfect. Uh, and he led the angelic choirs in singing and worship to the Lord uh, until this iniquity thing was found in him. This pride was found in him. He wanted to elevate himself to the level of God. No 
Nobody can be elevated to the level of God. Nobody can ascend into the greatness of my God. There's none beside him. There is none like unto him. Hallelujah. From the beginning of time until the end of time, the Lord our God is one, and there is none beside him. Hallelujah. And so that slithering reptile, that, that revolting creature that we jump back from is the physical expression of what the devil used to be. And of course, he doesn't want you to see his spiritual reality either. He doesn't want you to hear the roar, the distorted roar of that voice that comes out of hell. He doesn't want you to hear that. He doesn't want you to feel the creepiness and the eeriness and the chilling bone effect of his nasty nature and his dark dominion that he comes from. So so he gets behind your mother or he gets in the behind your brother or he gets in behind the pastor or he gets behind your friend and he starts whispering with a smile this isn't necessary this isn't important you can just sit in church with your hands folded you don't need to really worship the Lord you don't need to have that kind of freedom well that's foolishness and your flesh begins to hear the voice of a familiar Know your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. And yet the Lord of heaven, the God of the supernatural realm, is someone that we don't always recognize because he is invisible. He is immortal. He is eternal. He is absolutely the God from heaven. And so we are of such a fleshly nature, we don't know his spiritual breath when it breathes on us. We don't know his spiritual embrace when it embraces us. So we come to church and the breath of God breathes on us and we just sit there we are absolutely folded up paralyzed frozen into a mode of non-response in our humanity and we don't even know how to worship God until somebody says that's the spirit of the Lord and there's a way to worship him and it's not through your flesh or by your flesh it's by my spirit saith the Lord Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit. And in truth, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit. In truth, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. My God, and it's so interesting that the word says that until iniquity was found in him. It, it doesn't say until sin was found in him. The difference between sin and iniquity is one is premeditated and the other is just by nature. He was proud by nature. It came from his nature. And we are by nature. We get to look into ourselves in the mirror. And somebody told us we were cute and we believed them. Somebody told us how absolutely gorgeous we were and we believed them. And we look in the mirror and we absolutely take robes of fashion and we wrap them around us and we smile and we tilt our head and, and we spray the hairspray and, and we, take the, we take the Colgate and the Aqua and we take all of the, the little refreshments and, and we take the cologne and we get all spruced up and by the time we get to church we're a fashion display wanting the approval of the folks around us and have forgotten why we even came to church for the first time. That's why the Bible says go back and do the first works again. Go back and repent again. 
My God, when I first came into the house of God, when you first came into the house of God, you were broken with tears and a repentant heart calling out for the mercy of God. And the Bible says go back and do that again and forget about your hairspray, your new dress, your fashion design, your GQ image, and come boldly before the throne of God. There's somebody here today, when you headed for Bethesda, you've been, you've been uh, getting a little cold in your spirit, a little lukewarm, and, and, and you were determined not to let go like the rest of those folks. You were determined. And what you were doing is you were actually without meaning to separating yourself from the presence and the glory of God. No flesh shall glory in his sight. No flesh shall glory in his sight. No flesh shall glory in his sight. No glory in his sight. Hallelujah. I said no flesh shall glory in his sight. He's, he's not interested in your bank account. He's not interested in your looks. He's not interested in your reputation. He don't care how many sins you committed. He doesn't care how many wrongs you've done. He doesn't matter the amount of your transgressions. He doesn't care about the multitude of your iniquity. He cares nothing about that. All he wants is your heart that reaches out to him from the depth of sincerity and the depth of humility and acknowledges your need for him. I'm here to tell you that it's his breath that's keeping you alive today. It's by his breath that I can praise him. That's why it says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. When you see me and my arms shaking and my head jerking back and forth, that's not some crazy religious freak side show. That's getting the flesh out of the way. That's my heart trying to escape from its prison. The, the carnal mind is enmity between God and man. And I'm trying to get the barrier out of the way. I'm trying to get the enmity out of the way by conquering my flesh. Something inside of me wants to raise up and worship and praise God with everything that is within me. Here comes the stranger. Here comes the good Samaritan. Hallelujah. Here comes the invitation to the Holy Ghost. Isle running. Isle dancing. Rug ripping. Tongue talking. Holy Ghost drunk. Spirit filled people. Here comes the invitation. Well, I'm not used to that kind of thing. I have a dignity about myself. I was raised in a certain kind of culture, and I have a dignity about myself, and we were taught to behave ourselves. Baloney on all that. Baloney on all that. Hallelujah. That's your flesh. That's your flesh trying to exalt itself and trying to stand up in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Why do you think that when the trumpet sounds, your body is going to dissolve? Your body is going to disappear. He doesn't want this wretched body in his presence. He doesn't want this base material in his presence. And so he's going to do away with it so you can come dancing down the streets of gold with your spiritual glorified being. Woo! My God. It 
strange to your flesh. Hallelujah. And so the familiar spirit gets in behind the face of your dear friend who says, I wouldn't go over there with them Pentecostal people. I wouldn't go over there. Or your beloved loved one. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Peter, Peter was walking up to the Lord after that great revelation and saying, Lord, no, 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 no. That's not going to happen. Man, we'll fight them people. We'll fight them tooth and toenail. They're not going to come in here and hurt you. Well, we'll, we'll take our stand, Lord. And the Lord said, get thee behind me, Satan. You are a familiar spirit. You're trying to stop the work of redemption. I've got to go to the cross. My blood has to be shed. There's going to be a crimson stream of blood flowing down through the ages of time to reach every man and woman and child with the saving power of the gospel. Mm, hallelujah. 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 Oh, church, don't you let anybody stop you from coming into this atmosphere, this church of the living God, this spiritual expression, this place where the Holy Ghost is free to work. Have you noticed how the leaders of this church just kind of step aside when the rivers of the Holy Ghost flow into this place and they give you the green light to stand up and praise God with everything that is within you? Hallelujah. 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 The preachers of denominational religion don't realize that they're preaching a false message when they preach the Trinity. They don't understand it, but the familiar spirit has falsified their understanding. And many of them are sincere, but without realizing it, the name has been lifted out of the baptismal formula, and there's no power in the baptismal formula. The blood is in the name. I said the blood is in the name. 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 I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall by promise receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I have come today to lift up his holy name. God has called us to know him in a unique way. God has called us to know him in a specifically singular way. Even though his supernatural glory is foreign to our flesh, that's who we're gonna be with someday if we make it to heaven. Did you know that the Bible records that around the throne were 10,000 times 10,000s of the saints singing, Worthy is the Lamb? If you can't come into this sanctuary and worship God freely, why do you even want to go to heaven? Because that's all that's going to go on is the worthy worship of the Lamb. My brother gets up and leads the choir. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. That's a statement of fact for people that have forgotten the flesh and the issue of the flesh. Hallelujah. You are a wellspring of worship that's inside of a mortal, a mortal package. And that gusher of praise wants to come out of you. You're your soul wants to be reunited with its maker. Your soul wants to worship God in the presence of its maker and its creator. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything that is within me. Get your flesh out of the way. Get your mortality out of the way. Hallelujah. 
get your hesitation out of the way. <laughs> Listen to this. After all of the songs had been written, after all of the statements of God's greatness had been written, after David and the rest of the writers uh, described and ascribed greatness uh, to him, after all of what he had done for Israel had been recounted, after everything, every deliverance uh, that God had brought his people from and, and the bondage and the prison, after it was all over with, the last chapter, number 150, uh, it ends like this. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his sanctuary. And praise him in the firmament of his power. And praise him for his mighty acts. And praise him according to his excellent greatness. And praise him with the sound of the trumpet. And praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Oh, don't stop now. Don't stop now. Hallelujah. This is your God. This is your Redeemer. This is your Sustainer. This is your Provider. So. The St. Louis Cardinals came within one strike of losing the World Series. One strike. That's a very narrow margin, now look. One strike. And all of a sudden, the Texas Ranger pitchers lost the bounce. And they started walking people. They walked in the runs, Bishop. They just kept walking them. And the St. Louis Cardinal fans went, well, we'll take that if you want to give it to us. Now, they're the world champions, but it was kind of with a little help from the opposing team. My God doesn't need any help. Heavy. 
And his arm is not short. Hallelujah. Neither does he slumber. No sleep. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. The devil's trying to cut you out of the most powerful blessing you can possibly have right now. I'm telling you, the devil has absolutely lied to you about yourself. You're not the cutest thing we've ever seen. I'm sorry. I know what your mama said, but it ain't right. You're cute, but you're not that cute. And he's trying to tell you, you don't have to get all excited. I beg to disagree. I beg and to differ with you. I'm here to tell you, he is plenty to be excited about. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost has fallen in this house right now. And the Holy Ghost will absolutely set you free right now if you'll step out of your flesh. soon the signs of the times are everywhere he's looking for a people he's looking for a people a people that will bless him praise him and he's coming for people that look for him the second time without sin unto salvation hallelujah let's stand in the presence of the lord right now presence of the Samaritan of my soul the one that was a stranger has come to us hallelujah hallelujah yeah but I used to go to a church where they didn't talk about the blood it's the wrong church without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins I said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And the sin remitter has come to us today. He is a good Samaritan that came to you when religion passed you by. You see, the familiar spirits of the world, they, they entice you with music. A lot of people just go to church because of the music. I just want to hear the music. Well, you can find good music in a lot of places. But you don't want good music. You want anointed music. You want Holy Ghost sanctified music. You don't want just worship. You want the worship that's the result of the brazen altar of sacrifice where sin was laid down. And the cry of the voice of him and her that comes from a brokenness and a contrition and a need to be cleansed by the fiery presence of Almighty God and by the blood of the Lamb. We present that to you today. 
we present that to you today. It may be different, and it may not fit into the category of the Levite and the priest, but it is the voice and the touch of a stranger. If you look at that story, when that good Samaritan put that man on his beast, that beast represents the outreach of the church. The means by which you are brought to the house of God. Somebody at work told you, and you got on the beast of burden and traveled to the house of God. The innkeeper is Bishop Johnson, the pastor. And the Lord says, Bishop, take care of this wounded man until I return. Take care of this broken heart until I return. And he bound him up with his oil and his salve, which is the Holy Ghost and the oil of gladness. Woo! I'm going to turn this back over to our esteemed bishop. And right now, God's calling and reaching for you. And there may be somebody here who wants to respond by faith to what you have heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God has sent his word to minister to you on this morning. And right now we are inviting you to come to give your life to Christ. You don't know him. You don't have a relationship with him. You can't praise him. You can't say hallelujah because your spirit is too heavy. You can't lift up holy hands because you're weighed down by sin. Wherever you are, man, woman, boy, or girl, I'm inviting you now to step out from your seat and have the courage to come down this aisle to greet one of these altar workers who will explain to you what it is you need to do to be saved. We have water here to baptize you. We have a great big God who's ready and willing to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Where are you? Come now. Come now. You don't know who he is. Come and get to know him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Try him for yourself. And you'll find out he's a savior, he's a deliverer, and he wants to save you today. Who wants to come and say yes to the Lord? Who wants to give their life to him right now? Whose heart is ready? Whose mind has repented? Even those who are backsliders, we're inviting you to come. You stepped outside of the ark of safety, it's not too late for you to get it right with God. Come now. Come now. Don't ponder it, just tell God yes. You know in the scriptures, when it comes to the preaching of the gospel, there's a lot to it you may not understand. But nowhere in the Bible do you see where Jesus required that you understand this thing. All he wants you to do is believe it. Here comes one one. Give God praise. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that will diligently seek him. If you're willing to seek him today, if you come down this aisle, I promise you, you will not be disappointed because God will not let you down. Who else wants to come and say yes to the Lord? From the balcony, you can come. From the back row, you can come. Come on and tell God yes. Here comes somebody else. Give God praise. Who wants to join these that have come? Who else wants to give their life to God today? 
You don't have time to wait. You've heard a lot of different voices in your ear, like the preachers already told us, giving you their opinion, because that's all it is. If it's not based on the word of God, it's their opinion of what you need to do. But you've heard the preaching of the gospel today. Who else wants to come? Is there another that'll join these that have already come? 